Good morning, everybody. I just got back from a little break out in the mountains, and that's why I haven't posted a video for like a week or so. But we're back in the parlor right now, and it's just after four in the morning. You see the cows are coming in the parlor right now, just behind me here. And uh, today should be a great day. We got about a 90% chance of showers in the forecast. It's not 100% certain that we're gonna get it because it's 90%, but a pretty high chance we'll get about 20 mils today, or just under an inch, so hopefully we get that. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna get milking started this morning. Costa just ran and got the cows. This is just group one. Cows are hurrying up and trying to get their first spots in the parlor. Come on, ladies. Yep. As soon as I see some red tags come in the parlor, I'm gonna put the can under her before I do anything else. Red tags mean she's been treated, so we're gonna separate the milk out so that it doesn't go in the milk tank. I have to turn the milk machine on yet, which is just around the corner here. Gonna click milk. You can hear that milk machine fire right up. Put on some milker gloves. These gloves are, we don't wear them to keep our hands clean. We wear them because it's a more sanitary way for the udders. It's gonna keep them a little healthier and not spread any bacteria around, apparently. So when we're milking in this parlor, which is a double 12 parallel milking parlor, uh, we always clean six cows and hang six cows under, and then clean the next six cows and hang those under. Reason being, if you prep the cow, basically clean her, and then strip the teats to make sure they're good quality milk. After you do that, it signals a thing in a cow's head or something to let the milk go, and she'll start to drop the milk like crazy and then she'll start spraying it on the ground if you don't hang it under soon enough. And usually by the time you would have cleaned that 12th cow, the cows in the front are gonna be spraying milk like crazy. So that's why we do six cows and then hang them under right away. And then the next six cows kind of group it together and make that wait time a little bit less for the cows. See, she's spraying milk. She was spraying milk there. You can see all the milk here on the ground. Now that the first two lines in the parlor are hung under, I'm gonna go down into the basement and check if everything's good down there. Now there's all milk flowing through all of these lines in the basement, so if there was something wrong, you would see it leaking on the ground. Check out the milk pump, the filter, plate cooler. Make sure there's no milk on the ground anywhere. Yesterday, me and Dima, we changed all of these ropes in the parlor. They were getting pretty worn out. And you can see that one milker right there is hanging down quite a bit longer than the rest. And it's squeaking pretty loud. Something's not right up here in the cylinder where we changed the rope. So after milking today, I'm gonna open that cabinet back up. We're gonna take a look at it again. I don't know if we'll be able to fix that, but uh, we can at least take a look at it. ladies so we're pretty much finished group one just grab group two i always like to grab the first section of cows at the front of the barn here and then i walk to the back after i get all these ladies up here come on ladies come on ladies hey -o.
Group two is in the holding area now. The last couple of cows are gonna make their way over to group one. And uh, we'll start scraping group two up now. So we finished milking this morning, we cleaned the parlor off, and we also went ahead and AI'd 13 cows in the barn. Now that that's all done, I finally got some time to open this cabinet up here and take a look at this milker. That's the cabinet open, and you can see all these blue cylinders in here that run off a vacuum that actually lift the rope up and pull the milker off the cow when she's done being milked. I'm gonna take this off, get the bottom off there, and just make sure it's clean, make sure that plastic seal is good, and then if we can't find anything else, we'll clean it out, put some more grease on there or something. Okay, yeah, look at that. Look at how dirty it is. That's supposed to be all white. I'm also just gonna try and reach up this cylinder and clean the inside out a bit. I'm pretty confident it should be working normally now because there was a lot of trash in that cylinder, a lot of dust and everything. Like I said, we took them all apart yesterday, every single one in this parlor, and uh, switched all the ropes around. So that's probably when some dust got up in there. Thought we cleaned them all pretty good, but I guess not. I just helped Dima get this manure wagon hooked up to the Magnum and he's just gonna clean that wagon off. It's something we never really did. Pressure wash the entire thing off and take all the big hunks of manure off of all the spots all from underneath the frame and everything. That's really good to do because uh, over the, I think we've had this thing for seven years and you can see where we didn't clean it away. It's always a little bit moist in the patches of manure that stay on pieces of equipment like that and it starts to rust out and rust the paint away and then eventually the steel. So it's really good to clean it off all the time. We never really did it for this wagon. We do for the liquid tanker. We figured now we're gonna start doing it. It's not too late. This thing's still pretty, pretty good condition. So we might as well start taking better care of it. So that's what Dean was gonna do today. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna pressure wash it off today because it is gonna be a pretty big job to do underneath the, all the frame and stuff. But uh, we'll see. It's gonna get cleaned off now anyway. Just uh, take a little bit better care of it. You guys might notice something a little bit different with our Bueller Versatile here. We got some mirrors put on it. Pulling that manure wagon this spring with it, uh, you really miss the mirrors. We have them on the uh, Case MX-285 and they're so handy. You can see traffic behind you on the road. And with this thing, you're always just blind. Even with the sprayer, you weren't able to see behind you. I told my dad, I was like, man, it would be awesome if we got some mirrors on this thing. And he ordered some, our mechanic Brent put them on for us. And uh, I'm really stoked about that because mirrors are awesome. They look a little bit wide on this thing, but it's just something to get used to. They're really practical and a lot safer as well. It's just another uh, simple upgrade. Well, it didn't really look like we were gonna get too much rain today, but I guess it showed up anyway, pretty lucky. What do you think? Pretty good. You could stand around and watch this all day? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I could. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Especially if it is as dry as it is now. Yeah. Every shower helps. The crop till the next shower, I guess. Prolongs the suffering. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome.
It's the next day and we have a rain gauge just across the road from our farm. It's out of the way from all the trees and stuff. So we're gonna go check it out right now, see how much rain we actually ended up getting. We got a good amount of rain. So pretty much, pretty much eight tenths of an inch. That works out to maybe a little bit over 20 mils, around that 20 millimeter point, which is an awesome amount of rain for us. So got a little bit of extra work to do today because of it, but it's well worth it. All right, we gotta stop past the calf kitchen this morning because uh, my sister Nalene started her own YouTube channel. <laughs> you wanna tell them what it's called? It's called A Dairy on the Prairie. <laughs> nice. So I'll link that in the description down below. I guess you mostly feed cows in the videos and you have some other stuff in there too, like you got some horses you're training and stuff like that. Yep. So uh, yeah, guys, check, check out her channel. Give her a sub. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That'll be $4,000, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we grabbed the new Holland wheel order and we're gonna grab two barley straw bales, toss them into Corral 1. The littlest calves are in there. We wanna give them some dry bedding. All right, now comes the fun part. Since I'm doing this by myself, I gotta open the gate, run back into the loader quick enough, drive in here. Usually once I start driving, lift those bales up a bit, the cows spook and stay away from the gates. But until then, cows are always trying to get out and you gotta be really quick, so. Let's toss this gate open and see if we can't let any of them out. And they're gonna enjoy that bedding. Their pen is pretty muddy, but uh, it's always a lot easier to leave the corral when the cows have that fresh bedding. As you guys can see, they're completely preoccupied with that and they've completely forgot about trying to get out of the pen. This afternoon, also me and dad are just cleaning up some plastic. We got a lot of, I guess, three concrete silage pits and uh, we have to unfortunately put quite a bit of silage on the dirt as well. And then you end up putting dirt along the edges of the plastic. In the winter time, you can't separate the plastic from the dirt so easily. So you end up just pushing dirt and plastic up onto a big pile. And then you gotta deal with it in the spring. And that's what me and dad are doing this afternoon. We just got a little bit left here. It's kind of silage and dirt mixed in with the plastic. We've shaken a bit out over there. Dad took a bucket back to the dump, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna clean this up this afternoon, try and make the yard look a little bit neater. Anyway guys, that is gonna be it for today's video. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below, and I uh, hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.